Hi, my name is Dave Hillowitz, and I'm a composer and a software developer. And today I wanted to talk about how to make fake round robins. Last week we talked about how to make real round robins. And this week I kind of wanted to talk about what happens when you don't actually have enough data to make real round robins. So here's a real world scenario. Uh, a while back, my mom was getting rid of a, a piano that was like our family piano for like 50 years. And she'd had it since she was like a teenager. And it was kind of traumatic. Um, she was moving into a smaller place. I didn't have enough room for it. She didn't have enough room for it. So she was basically getting rid of it. She was donating it to charity. Um, but before she did, I was staying with her for the weekend. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool to just like record this um, and make a sample out of it so that we kind of have a little bit of like, it's weird to be nostalgic about a sample, but yeah, that's basically the idea. So I set up my laptop next to the piano. I pre basically positioned the microphone in the best possible place I could find. And I sat there for like two hours, just hitting every single key of the thing. So what I have is these pretty crummy samples of my family piano from my childhood. So today what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna try to turn that into a contact instrument. And it's a perfect case study for this technique that I'm going to use for faking round robins because I only have one sample for each key. So let's get started. Okay, so first I'm going to start up Contact, which I've already got a track open here. And it's called Chapel Street Piano because that's where my mom lived. And uh, okay, I'm going to open up. I've got all these samples. And we're going to make a new instrument. And mapping. Okay, so I'm grabbing all the samples and I'm just gonna pull them in and I'm dragging them into a completely random place at this point. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do auto map setup. And what that does is it takes little tokens from the file name and it uses them to populate the metadata. So because I've already numbered these things, I've obviously I've worked with contact before, I know what it likes and what it loves is MIDI note numbers. So I've named everything according to the MIDI note number. I can just say make root key. There you have it. Okay. We hit apply, close, then we do auto map. I don't even know if I need to do this. I might have automatically done it, but I'm going to do auto map selected. Then I'm going to do auto spread zone key ranges. I think what I want is by root keys. There we go. So what it has done, I'm going to deselect everything is it set the zone. So this uh, is 21, which it knows to be a negative one. That's what it calls it internally. And it has spread it across all of the keys going down to the beginning. Well, I, I mean, that's a little ridiculous. The piano starts at one key. So we're gonna start at the point where the piano actually started. We're gonna do the same for the top. Okay, so here we have it. And I'm gonna try hitting a few keys. So it's not a great sounding sample. You can, you can already hear that it's a little bit pitchy, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so we've got our basic instrument started. I'm gonna actually rename it already. Let's call it Chapel Street Rev 1. And yeah, we're good. So now's a perfect time to introduce the round robins. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, an external script that's called Ultra TKT. Uh, I'm going to go to this web page, Big Bob's Ultra TKT script. This, as you'll see here, last updated 2006. This is a super old script. It's aged really, really well. It works perfectly in Contact 5, just as it did in Contact 2 when it was written. Uh, it was written by um, Big Bob, who was kind of like this like veteran coder of uh, contact instruments and like. 2004, 2006. Um, I don't know uh, if he does that anymore, but he also wrote the SIPS scripts, which are useful for um, faking legato. So just so you know. So, okay, we're gonna download the zip file. I'm gonna open it up and, okay. Gives us a bunch of scripts. This is, I think the TXT is the one we want. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna open it with text edit. Yep. That's it. So I'm going to go into script editor, hit edit, paste it in. I'm going to call this ultra TKT and apply. 
as you can see, a whole UI popped up. That UI is all defined within this script. Okay, so there are a bunch of parameters here, as you can see. We need to like fine tune it a little bit. So let's go through them. First, TKT, we want it to be always active. That controls whether or not this script is actually functioning. We want it to function. Um, variations three, pretty much everything you can keep the same. We want um, either round robin or uh, random no pairs. Random no pairs means it does random, but it makes sure it never hits the same zone twice. Okay. This is really important, this part on the right here, the instrument range. What that does is it tells uh, Ultra TKT, which is a script, um, what range of zones to actually consider when finding replacements. And you'll see why that's important in just a second. So let's go down to our mapping. We're gonna, what you do is you hit set range. See how it says press set range to enter from keyboard? Press set range. You don't actually need to use a MIDI keyboard. You can actually just tap here. You type the lowest note and the highest note. You go back up here and you see low key, 21, top key, 107. And that corresponds exactly with the samples that we have. Now we can close the script editor. We're done with that. Now let me show you the magic. So I hit a note. Did you happen to notice what happened there? Look again at the mapping. I hit the note multiple times. It's not hitting the same sample. It's actually hitting the next zone and it's pitching it down by one or it's hitting the previous zone and it's pitching it up by one. So it sounds like I'm hitting the same note, but it's actually using different samples and that makes a huge difference. I'm gonna turn it off so you can see the difference. So TKT disabled and let's make a, a little loop that is really, really monotonous so that we would like really, really notice. Okay. Let's hit this. Okay, so you can really tell that's the same sample over and over and over again. Okay, now we're gonna switch TKT on. Much, much better actually. Okay, it's not perfect, but that actually has more to do with how lousy my samples are than anything else. Now also, you might wanna look and see what it's doing. Always hitting a different sample. Very, very good. The reason that step above setting the instrument, instrument range was so important is otherwise what might happen when you're hitting 21 is it would actually try to grab zone 20 without realizing that the instrument didn't have anything mapped to zone 20. So that's why you need to set the instrument range. Okay, so we've got the round robins done. That took like no time at all. It's out of the box solution. Let's um, make this instrument a little bit better. Um, okay, so what are we gonna do? Um, okay, well, one thing that's missing is modulation. So, doesn't sound very natural. I'm gonna go down and there's actually a preset in contact for piano. It's a bit better, okay. Uh, I'm gonna add some reverb, why not? Uh, maybe as a send, okay. It's a little, little too much, I think. Okay, it's starting to sound more like a real piano. Okay, so lately there's been this huge uptick in interest in soft pianos, partly because of Olafur Arnold's, um, and just in general, it's kind of like a weird trend in film music, and I've very much like been bitten by it. Unfortunately, when I recorded this, I didn't know that that was gonna be a trend, and I hit every note really hard, and I only have one velocity layer. So I'm gonna to try to fake it with a low-pass filter. Okay, go into filters, low-pass. And by the way, if you don't know what a low-pass filter does, basically all it does is gets rid of the high end. Uh, it lets the low frequency signal through, and the high end gets cut off. So I hit a note. If I turn it off, this is what it sounds like. If I turn it on, 
So that's kind of like a soft piano. It's, like, it's a fake soft piano. Of course, I don't want it to be that extreme, right? So I can fool around with it. If I have it all the way up, basically everything is let through. So maybe a little bit of the way, way, way high end that I can't even hear anyway um, gets cut off, but it doesn't really matter. So what I want to do is I actually want to vary the cutoff based on how hard I'm hitting the keys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a modulator and I'm going to select an external source and I'm going to select velocity. And what that does is basically it correlates the velocity of the notes that are coming in with the cutoff. And here you can see we've selected cutoff frequency as the thing that we're modulating. So if I hit the note softly, if I hit the note harder, exactly what I want. Okay, so next. What I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to try to double this. So one of the weaknesses of this is that um, I recorded it in mono because I was using this crummy little mic and it's a mono mic, but I'd like to kind of fake that stereo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a second group. I'm going to take this group, I'm going to duplicate it, turn off edit all groups. Okay, we only want to see selected groups showing up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up by two notes. Now if I try to hit, hit a key, it's going to sound awful. So now that I've moved it up, so now I'm triggering two samples. On the left side, I'm actually not triggering the sample that corresponds to the key that I pressed. I'm triggering the sample that corresponds to two notes to the left, and I'm pitching it up by two. And on the right side, I'm actually using the correct thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the right side and I'm going to pan it a little bit to the right and I'm going to take the left side and I'm going to pan it a little bit to the left. So, here, let's grab all the samples on the right side and let's say 25. Maybe that's not so little. I don't know. I think it's out of 100. Okay, so now it's kind of a stereo sample. It's not really stereo because, of course, each time you're actually getting two different hits. But it's, uh, you know, it's about as much effort as I'm willing to put in for this pretty lousy sample set. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, time to start playing with it. Okay, so I've been playing with the sample for about 15 minutes now, and this is what I was able to come up with. Okay, so it's a little saccharine, but um, it gives you a sense of what the sample can do. I'm going to uh, include a link to the sample in the description for this video, so hopefully you can download it and make something cool with it. Uh, okay, hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, if you've been enjoying it and you have not yet subscribed, uh, click the little subscribe button. Okay, 